Alright, so we've got our cluster out of the car, as you can see. Um, these are a bit fiddly to get apart. You've got to pop these side covers off here. We'll take the buttons out. Um, then we can get this front fascia off, get the rear fascia off. We have to pop all the needles off um, to get to the front side of the board to reflow these connectors. Alright, our front fascia's off. Now we're going to work on getting our needles off. So we've got one, two, three, and four. We can pop the needles off. Now the LCD does have issues in this cluster. Customer's not fussed about that. So we're not going to do anything with that at the minute. Alright, and just like that, our cluster is apart, as you can see. So just going across the board, we've got our buttons on the side. We've got our four motors here. There's a little bit of burn marks and dust around that motor. Um, we've got our can transceivers and the EEPROM chip is down the bottom there. And what we're going to do is we're going to reflow all these connector joints here and here. Alright, so I've gone over and I've reflowed all these joints. Now one thing that I am going to do on this particular cluster is we're going to grab our meter um, and we are going to buzz over all these pins that are next to each other. Get tangled up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buzz over all these pins. This is going to be bloody impossible. Just like that. Just to make sure that we don't have any shorter pins. Um, the reason being is they are quite close together and I have made the solder joints a decent size just so we definitely have good contact. Um, all the solder joints are nice and shiny so they're all good. I'm going to uh, put some flux on this connector pins here and we're going to do this one next. Alright, meter set up again. Um, we have reflowed this connector now so all I'm going to do is go over all these pins Obviously these two aren't close, so I'm not worried about them. Just these two, we're going to go over there and make sure we don't have a short across them. We'll do the other two and those two, and then this can all go back together. All right, Ford Cluster back together. Um, fiddly, but not too bad. Buttons are all seated properly, which is the main bloody thing. Um, all our needles are exactly where they come off. So now to get this plug back into the car, wiggle that connector and see if we're good. Okay, so cluster's back in, car's all started. I've got the torch because it's bloody dark over in this corner. Um, as you can see, our coolant temp should be about right. This car will be mildly warm. Um, push the indicators on, so our indicators are all working. Our dash lights are all working. You won't be able to see that with a torch. Now that pixel damage was there initially, so we're not worried about that. Um, fuel gauge is working. Our rev counter is also working. And I'm going to make an assumption that our speedo is going to be working. So what I'm going to do now is wiggle this connector at the back. And you see where my hand is there. I'm wiggling that and we are all sorted. So no dropouts. That's all I was doing before was wiggling this connector. Um, this cluster is good to go. And hopefully that's the end of our issues. All right. So on to our fault reports for this particular FG. Um, similar symptoms I've seen on all of them. Now, what we've got obviously is theft detected. This fuel level sensor issue is another one that's interesting. Um, obviously that has to do with the cluster. That fuel level sender in this vehicle has been replaced. They replaced that previously. Um, so we know that this hasn't got a fuel level sender issue. I believe it was part of the cluster dropping out that set this. Um, you've also got our communication bus faults here. We've got traction disable switch faults. Um, Fuel gauge sender, open or short circuit, loss come with BCM, park assist, HVAC, radio. Now, interestingly, um, there is still a few faults in here for loss come with front display and instrument panel. There's instrument panel, communication network, instrument panel, etc. So, this previously has led me to, you know, look at instrument clusters as this issue. Um, and it's good that we've finally been able to replicate it on the spot and you know, pinpoint that that's our problem. So I've had this running and driven it back and forth for a little while now and it hasn't missed a beat. Um, we've whacked the dash, wiggled it, no problems whatsoever. So this Ford is all sorted.